If you're looking for the best boost pedal, here's a list you must see. We made this list based on our personal preference and sorted it based on their features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturers and customer feedback. Also, we've included options for every type of customer. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Jim Dunlop Mc401 MXR. First up is the MXR Mc401. With a true bypass and one goal in mind, this boost pedal is for those who need more boost without any coloration whatsoever. With boost adjustable between 0 and plus 20 dB, there is a decent amount of variance available, but otherwise, this is a no-frills option that really delivers. One knob and one switch is exactly what you need if you're looking for a swift injection of boost, and it's exactly what you get. Premium hardware inside the chassis also ensures that you won't suffer any signal interference whatsoever, which is ideal if you don't want any change to your tone-only boost. Looking for flanger pedals, the MiG-401 is also an extremely well-built piece of equipment, being die-cast and robustly bolted together. We don't see why it won't stand up to years of touring use. The black brush metal effect also looks great, and would certainly be at home on a more aggressive board which just goes to show the potential for a clean boost even in a metalhead's arsenal. Moving on to the next at number 2 with TC Electronic Spark. TC Electronic Spark is one of the more versatile units on the market today, making it ideal for those that want a little bit more from their boost pedal than just a decibel increase. Rather than just a level knob to adjust the boost, you'll also find a gain knob to really push your tone with a bit more grit and compression. For this effect exactly, you may wish to look at compressor pedals. There's also a bass and treble adjustment, along with a nifty little toggle that sits between the knobs, which allows you to move between a pure, clean boost tone and a couple of preset tonal options, one in the mid-range and another that adds a bit of fatness. That said, the TC Electronic Spark is really very effective as a pure, boost-only unit. The level knob will take you right up to an impressive plus 26 dB, and with the rest of the adjustments left alone, it's ideal for gate-crashing the mix with high-powered solos and licks. In terms of looks, the housing is fairly plain, but it's smart enough and will blend into most boards nicely. The number 3 position is held by Aroma EBR1 Booster. This budget choice would probably not be on most guitarists' list, mainly because Aroma isn't well known as a manufacturer. That, however, doesn't mean it isn't worth you taking a look. Despite the price, you're getting a true bypass boost pedal with level adjustment up to plus 14 dB and knobs for low and high ranges too. Those are features you'd expect from a much pricier pedal. If we're being honest, the ABR1 does alter the tone slightly, even with no low or high adjustment. So if you're dead set on a unit that does nothing more than give you boost without any coloration, then this might not be the one for you. That said, there are very few pedals on the market that give you this much for so little. Construction seems to be decent, with a chassis made from an aluminum alloy. The brand isn't hugely well known, so longevity over touring use isn't known, but initial impressions are good. The design is fairly basic, but the industrial feel is actually quite cool. Next at number 4 we have TC Electronic Spark Mini, the little brother of the standard Spark. TC Electronic Spark Mini offers the same high-quality components for clean, interference-free boost, but in a smaller package, and without a few of the bells and whistles. Aside from the foot switch, you get just the one single-level knob which moves from plus 0 dB to plus 20 dB. It's not as strong as the full-size Spark, and it won't allow you to alter your core tone, but it does do a superb job of giving you an extra kick for solos and other lead parts. One useful feature is Prime Time which allows the pedal to be either switched on and left, or you can hold the foot switch down just to boost for a short period, and it does this at an amazing price, making this little boost pedal a really good choice for those who just want clean boost and good components without breaking the bank. And it might be small, but let's face it, this thing looks great. The cream and gold detailing is stunning and actually looks cooler than the full-size Spark. The number 5 position is held by Joyo Audio Roll, the Joyo Roll Boost is one very interesting little pedal. The boost knob label is expressed only as gain on the front, which somewhat hides the fact that it's capable of giving you a plus 35 dB increase. That's some serious power, which means that whether you use this as part of your effect setup, or just to boost the signal into the amp, you're going to notice. It works well, adding some extra sparkle at the top end. 
but it does feel like there's a little bit of a tonal change. Certainly not bad for the price, which is why the Roll Boost deserves to be on this list. Design-wise, this is a pretty shallow little unit, but it's a good-looking thing, and it should neatly fit into most boards with these. Bright yellow might not be to everyone's taste, but it fits nicely with the funky aesthetic and rounded edges. Build quality isn't as high as some of the boxes on this list, but it's still very competitive at what is an extremely attractive price point. The number six position is dominated by Electro Harmonix LPB1. Branded a linear boost pedal, the Electro Harmonix LPB1 is a relatively low budget option that is in fact a reissue of the original effects board released way back in 1968. Don't let the low price fool you, however, this is a great choice and is no poorly made imitation of the original. This thing is made in New York, which is a real surprise, as US made hard, or usually carries a much heftier price tag. You get just the one adjustment knob, as with all of the straightforward boosters, which packs a serious amount of gain. We'd really recommend this if you're working with pickups that just don't quite have the output you want. The transparency on this unit isn't quite as good as some other options, with a small change in the mid-range, but it's good enough. The Electro Harmonix LPB1 is a very good value product that looks the part and is superbly made. It might not be perfect for those who are extremely particular about their tonal purity and want literally nothing but booze, but just about anyone else would really benefit from having this die-cast little beast in their arsenal. Moving on to the next at number 7 with BBE Boost to Grand Clean Boost. Right around the mid-range in terms of pricing, the BBE Boost to Grand sets out from the very beginning to be the most transparent clean boost pedal on the market. It's packed with seriously high-quality hardware to achieve this, and offers boost of up to plus 20 dB. Does it succeed? We think so. The Boost to Grand really doesn't touch your core tone at all, making it absolutely perfect for those who are nervous about purchasing a boost unit that might mess up what they've achieved already. Our only criticism would be that the bypass switch noise when turning boost off and on isn't the quietest, but that could well change once things have worn a little. The Boost to Grand gets into this list for its excellent hardware and engineering which means that it's arguably the most transparent clean pedal we've reviewed. It's good value for this reason, especially with the supplied power unit. The number 8 position is held by MXR Mon 133 Microamp, a much smaller cousin of the MXR we've already covered in our list. The Mon 133 is branded as a microamp, and we like that name, because that's pretty much what it is. Crank up the dial, and you get some serious extra boost without any real coloration. Just amplification. We think this little unit would be ideal when twinned with an old Marshall or Vox and either no other or a very restrained set of pedals. There's a bit of extra brightness when applied, but aside from that, it's just pure, clean boost that you can feed into the amp. You get a really nice sound by pushing an older valve amp just a little bit harder than it's used to. Finally, it's minimalist, but certainly not in a bad way. This little box would slot nicely into just about any board while looking good. In fact, we think it's probably one of the nicest looking units on our list. Next at number 9, we have Donner Boost Killer. The Donner Boost Killer. Interesting name, and we think something must have got lost in translation somewhere. Because this little thing certainly doesn't kill boost, it gives you plenty of it. You've got a 30 dB range to adjust through, 15 dB to plus 15 dB, with a total of 4 knobs to choose from, namely bass, treble, volume, and gain. This is a genuinely versatile product because it's clearly been designed to give you all kinds of boost. It will very happily be used as a purely clean booster, though the transparency isn't perfect, but far from bad at this price point. But if you play with the other dials, you can get some nice overdrive going and a bit of general tone shaping. It is an interesting pedal because while it's definitely good for entry-level clean boost, it has a fairly wide range of applications. We think it's definitely worth a look which is why we've included it here, because it's so very flexible for the price, is built well, and looks great. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Zodiac EP Booster Mini EQ. Named after the EP3 echo machine used by legendary guitarists such as Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin fame and fret-tapping genius Eddie Van Halen, this Mini Boost is intended to do nothing but bring out your tone by giving the bottom end a bit more definition and brighten the top end. And we're pleased to say it does, just that this is a very, very good clean boost pedal indeed. All of the marketing spiels claims that you can change the EQ shape of this pedal as well as boost. 
and you'd be forgiven for being pretty confused by that. There is after all just a one level slash gain knob, and the foot switch, right, wrong if you open up the chassis. You'll find a couple of additional switches that allow you to make adjustments other than boost. That's all for today. We upload music product review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.